Hello, good morning, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Heatherina. If you don't know already, if you are not subscribed, take a moment and hit the subscribe button and like this video to support y'all girl. If you are a returning viewer, follower, fan, whatever, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all your guys' support. Um, yeah, I've been gone for a little while, so... If you didn't know, my roof caved in in the back of my house. So there has been some issues with the roof already. We had fixed it and um, yeah, happened again. Um, so now I have to get a roofer in, roof? Yeah, a roofer, roofer, roofer in <laughs> to put a pitch roof on and um, yeah, it's hard coming up with like a big chunk of money like really fast. So I do have a GoFundMe. But as of... That's just why I've been away. Not only that, um, trying to find content, kind of trying to feel like where I fit into YouTube right now. I'm a lifestyler, so you know, I cook, I do makeup, I love crime stories a lot, which we're going to do one today. And um, I like healing. And you guys, I have been working on a book. If you guys have not heard or if you do not follow my TikTok, go follow my TikTok. It's fun too. But if you have not followed my TikTok, um, you wouldn't know that somebody who watches my YouTubes has been in my YouTube lives and on my TikTok has stolen my journey planner that I worked <sighs> extremely hard on as all you guys know. They stole the name, they stole the insides, they changed some things or whatever, but nonetheless, um, they took it. Now, there's a saying out there that says maybe they needed it more than me, but yeah, I made a new book. Um, it's called Fuck You Life. It's going to be dropping on Amazon here soon. I am working on My Killer Kids um story as well it takes a lot longer because um obviously it's a lot longer but today we're gonna talk about a true crime story so let's get through with the disclaimer all right here we go so before we start today's true crime story let me start with the disclaimer this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only I talk about graphic things, strong language, I cuss sometimes. None of this is intent this <laughs> none of this is intended for young kids. This is intended for mature audiences. So viewer discretion is advised. All right, guys. All right. So, um yeah. Let's get on with the story. All right. So, today we are going to do this popular pink and yellow eyeshadow. It's popular um, because I wore it on TikTok and everybody is like, oh my God, how do you do that? So I was like, hmm, I guess I'll do a video. But at the same time, let's talk about a true crime story. We're gonna talk about John, um, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Jamalski. He was born May 9th, 1935. So yeah, he's old like me this NYX marshmallow we are still using I have not switched over I have a new one that I'm gonna be trying that whole um this one the uh, watermelon glow up I got my hands on one guys they're sold out everywhere but that's okay cuz I got one and I'm gonna try it out and see if it's the bomb diggity right now we're putting primer on because for today's look I know you guys are used to seeing me do my eyes first which I will start that but we um kind of need like the full makeup on for this one and this smells so good like I don't like marshmallows but this is great alrighty so John was from Syracuse New York he was a hoarder um, bottle picker but he, um, he wasn't always that way, guys. Um, he likes to describe himself as smooth with the females. Yeah, he felt all girls kind of wanted him and that he knew how to, like, talk to them and guide them. And, eh. 
when he was busted on April 3rd, 2003, he was 78 years old. Yeah, don't ever um, underestimate the fact that it doesn't matter your age. They can still be pervs. All right, so I always start by priming, putting crap on my lips. It's just Carmex. I like it. So he began his kidnapping ordeal in 1988. Yeah, yeah, it's been that long. What am I looking for here? Yeah, Pere Louise, we're getting it on. John had a pretty normal life until he hit his 50s. Um, he was married with three sons. He had a community college degree and he worked at a local grocery store. You know, just your typical everyday meal of a person. So guys, we put this Pear Louise on our eyes. Um, it just gives you a good primer base. And I found with all the primers that I've used, this is one of the best. Alrighty, so his life turned around in the 1980s when he lost his job and he began scavenging for cans and bottles. Because that's what some people do, you know? You can make money off that, believe it or not. Like collecting cans and bottles and turning them in. Um, where I'm from, it's not really popular. But other places, probably big cities and stuff, um, it's more popular. Oh. Stupid camera. Yeah, still having camera issues. It's so stupid for no apparent reason. When it got checked... Nothing wrong with it. So, again, his life turned around in 1980 when he lost his job and began scavenging for cans and bottles. His hoarding became out of control and he filled his house from the floor to the ceiling with crap that he found. Yeah, he was getting to be quite a hoarder. Um, if you didn't catch my last bit, I am using Pure Louise on my eyes. <clears throat> Not only was he collecting crap, and fill in his house. He also had an affair um, on his wife with a teenage girl. And he would embarrass his wife because he would legitly bring this girl to family outings and things. Like showing her off like it wasn't a big deal. I'm still sticking this eye primer on my nose now. I've tested it for a while and it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference. My nose still gets like... Let's just get it everywhere. But it still seems, not as bad, but it still seems to break up on my nose a lot. So when he started seeing this teenage girl, um, this relationship really like inspired him and his illicit ideas. This is when things started kind of taking a turn. He started cruising around in his Mercury Comet car, it was vintage, looking for females kind of on the wrong side of the tracks. He was just out there thinking he was going to find some young girl again. I'm not sure if, it didn't really say if the young teenager that he was seeing, if uh, she broke up with him or what really happened and he was like, oh, I can get somebody that's young. So let's try again. But he began to drive around in his Mercury Comet, like trying to. This stuff is like skeeting out like everywhere. Ooh. So I'm using the um, Stay Naked Foundation. And this one is in 30 CP for anybody who has the same color tone as me. Um, he then decided to build himself a bunker, which was 12 by 24 foot. This was entered through a crawl space, which was behind a hidden door in his garage. Oh, get that on. Anyone that would ask him, he would just be like, it's a storm shelter. Like, everybody has storm shelters. It's not a big deal, right? Well, let's talk about this bunker for a minute because this bunker. So you guys have heard uh, some other stories um, about people who build like storm shelters and things and they keep girls in it. But this one is like the ghetto of all bunkers. Not that any bunker is really good. This was like the ghetto. Um, it had a steel door that was leading to an eight foot long tunnel, which, come on, which you had to crawl through 
on your hands and knees like an eight foot hole yeah I'll put pictures up so yeah that that doesn't creep you out I mean I don't know what would because that's like creepy as hell um so it led to another steel door which led to an eight foot high 24 foot long and 12 foot wide room so it wasn't really that big of a room and I'm having major issues with the pump on this thing. It's literally like, watch. Like get your crap together. Like why are these pumps? Like, oh shit. Um, so the entry was a small box and it was really weird guys. So you climb through, okay. So you climb through this tunnel. All right. And there was a, a steel box that I had a steel door on it in this box, okay? And when you opened that, you didn't go into the room. You had to climb down on a three-rung ladder. Does that make sense? You had to climb down into the room. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> into this room. Um, yeah, so there's a little ladder there. And in this room, there was a um, bed that was just like a foam nasty mattress that he like found at the dump type thing. Oh my god, this stuff. Okay, it's like squirting everywhere. But, um, yeah, it was just a dirty mattress, like foam mattress that just was there, you know, on the floor. He did have like a, a raised pedestal that had like this old dingy, um, bathtub that he had on there. And he would literally fill the bathtub with a garden hose and expect the girls to get in there. That's how he showered and he'd hose them off with this hose. He was just really gross. Um, there was like, um, let's see here. Uh, there was a chain that, that he would connect to an ankle bracelet so he could make sure that they weren't going to get anywhere like anybody would want to crawl through that hole to begin with. But yeah, he had like an ankle bracelet on them. And in the ceiling, he had like the metal tubing for like the dryer vent. He had it connected to his furnace upstairs that would blow warm air into this little makeshift room. Um, this tub though, which was interesting, it did have a drain. And when they drained it, it would go straight onto the floor because there was no plumbing. So that water just stayed on that cement floor. And it was like, they said it was very damp and moldy down there. But the water would stay on the floor until it evaporated. Like it was like, yeah, you don't deserve to even have plumbing. Like you, it was just like the ghetto. It was the ghetto of all ghettos. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. He had like this metal or aluminum chair with no seat on it that sat over the top of a bucket that they had to use for a toilet. Yeah, imagine that. That was their toilet. It was so gross. There was a clock radio that sat on a portable refrigerator and there was um, really nothing else in there. It was just, that was your home. <coughs> so right around the time that this was all going on, when it was like around the time that um, Ariel Castro had kidnapped those three girls. So we're taking the pink from the James Charles palette, the one on the very bottom there. <coughs> Excuse me, I have been sick. I've been sick. I got the coughs today, like a tickle. All right, so we're using James Charles hot pink on the eyelid and we're not going up too far with this stuff so in in September of 1988 he lured a 15 year old girl into his car he blindfolded her when he brought her into the bunker and so she couldn't even see where she was going and he kept her in there for two years guys the family reported her missing um, and they were searching for her and two years later she just here I am um, he did tell her that he was he would hurt her brother if she told on him and so he she she didn't report it like that was it she was just like yeah I didn't you know I just ran away I just ran away from home she didn't she didn't even report it guys um, in 1995 John abducted a second 14 year old girl he really had a thing with young teenage girls 
um, he lured her, lured her by asking her to deliver a secret package in which she agreed to do and she willingly walked into um, this bunker like she she just went in poor thing didn't even know like what was going on um, for two years he raped her daily he raped the last girl daily as well at the time his wife was ill with cancer um, he freed her in 1997 by blindfolding her and driving her to her mother's apartment and pretty much just dropping her off. He did threaten her as well, but the girl reported that she was raped and kidnapped by an older man. Now, because of her previous drug usage, her drug problems, they didn't take her as a, a credible witness. How sad, right? You go through something so big like that and they're like, nope, don't believe you. Sorry. That's what happened. The third victim. Yeah. So these girls are not reporting this stuff. Therefore, um, he just keeps getting away with it. Yeah. Good job, John. Like you're good at manipulating um, young girls, aren't you? You're good at that. So, um, the third victim was abducted and confined in 1997. Oh, powder everywhere. I'm going to set my under eyes and stuff. I just got to make sure there's no pink that's fell down because if you haven't used pinks or reds, like, oh God, it seems to stain like your eyelid and stuff. I'm just going to set my under eye here real quick in my nose. <coughs> Alrighty. So she was confined in 97. She was a 53 year old Vietnamese immigrant and she barely spoke English guys. Yeah. Like you want to stay here in this country when people are doing that stuff. He kidnapped her and took her to an abandoned house where he raped her and he then tied her to a stack of cardboard boxes and brought her to his little dungeon. He called it a dungeon. It was like a storm shelter to everybody else, but to him it was a dungeon. He raped her daily and would force her to take care of him, like do all these little like chores and stuff for him like because that's what I would want to be doing you kidnap me and you're going to force me to do your chores I guess I would rather do chores than anything else so he held her for five months and then he dropped her off at a Greyhound station and gave her $50 and sent her on her way but she did turn him in and they felt like <clears throat> They were very skeptical of her allegations. I don't know if it's because she was an immigrant, you know, or if it was the language barrier, but they didn't really investigate it, obviously, because there happened to be more victim. There happened to be another victim. It, you know, sometimes I feel like they're just like, don't take you seriously when you don't, you have like language barriers instead of getting somebody in there and just kind of being like, what's going on? But we don't know the situation. We don't, you know, really know what their thoughts were. Nonetheless, she, um, went on her way. So now he's gotten away with three, um, three times of kidnapping and raping. And he's probably just on like this massive high, like I can do whatever I want nobody's stopping me from doing whatever I'm free to just you know torture the world hold on let me do my eyebrows yeah I'm back in the eyebrows I am hating them right now but they're on and I am ready to go so now that I have my foundation and my powder on no bronzer no blush we're just going in with that pink and just darkening it up a little bit as we're telling our story 
and we're not taking it really far up but into the crease at least okay so he's gotten away with it three times you know he's feeling like he can get away with anything I'm sure because I mean who wouldn't at this point nobody's telling on him so he's not getting busted because like he scared everybody off they're like yeah, not screwing with this guy so in 2001 John's wife uh, died I'm sure it was from the cancer although it did not say um, what it was from I'm pretty sure it was from cancer because she was battling with that um, at the time that this was all going on, like, gee, God, like she's going through some heavy stuff that she's probably really needing the support. And here's John out just doing whatever that John wants to do. Sharpening up my yellow pencil, like giving it a point, you know. Um, so he then kidnaps again, this time a 26 year old single mother she is walking um it said that she was high on lsd and she was out walking and because the weather was um not so great she decided to take him up on his offer for a ride she was like yeah i don't want to be out in this no more you know and he's an older guy so i'm sure she was like probably thinking like what is he gonna do but she gets in the car she's up the ride he as well or her as well as the others he did rape daily um he also when she would uh not i'm guessing that the other girls kind of succumbed i got a hair who else because these weird hairs but I'm guessing that these other girls, like, didn't give him any problems because she did. And when she would, he would burn her with cigars. So, she was fighting back. She obviously was like, nah, this isn't going to happen. Anyways, went on a hair thing. But, uh, anytime she would buck back, he would burn her with a cigar. <clears throat> and she ended up getting... A really bad um, abscess on her lower back from where he had burned her and um, she wanted to write home to her parents to just be like hey don't worry about me um, I'm sure her parents were probably the ones taking care of her kid because it said she was a single parent but it didn't go into how many kids she had or what the ages were or anything but she wanted to write home and let her parents know that she was okay and he allowed her to do it but only if she said that she was in rehab now later on that kind of ended up coming up and the fact that they were like the parents said that the letter seemed legit like it was in her tone it was in her handwriting and she says it's because he forced me to write it so i mean yeah i could see it both ways i'm not here to to judge but nonetheless he kept her only two months and she went straight to the police <clears throat> she couldn't give them a location because um, when he brought her in and when um, he let her go he blindfolded he blindfolded them so they couldn't see I mean he was smart but he wasn't smart enough because she did say he was driving a 1975 Mercury Comet. So the, the, the police were looking for this 1975 Mercury Comet. They only found one in Syracuse. And this guy was like a do-gooder. Um, they checked him out. It was not him. And they kind of just let it go instead of like searching further. It ended up being a 1974 Mercury Comet. But the police didn't really broaden their search to be like hey like how is she gonna know like what year it is like she was close kudos to her that she was close but you would think the cops would I don't know be searching more comments like it was a vintage car so it's not like it's a popular car so anyways and again he gets away with this again of course so in October 2002, John kidnapped another victim. She was a 16-year-old girl who he nicknamed Mika. 
Um, he was 67 at the time, and he kind of felt like Mika was his friend. Um, kudos to her for surviving. Obviously, she gained his trust enough to lead him to believe that. So, kudos to her and her survival skills. Um, but he started to, he brought her up into the house. He did lock all the exit places that she could get out of, of course. Like, he still didn't want her to get away. But, um, she got to come upstairs into the regular house and, uh, yeah, be warm, be clean, not be in that dank place, because I can't even imagine, like, the smells that were coming out of that place, and it was so dirty, but he trusted her enough that he took her bowling, um, he, she liked to sing karaoke, so he would take her to a karaoke bar, even though obviously she was not of age. Um, he would take her there. He would go to take his cans and his bottles in to get money for them, like the the redistributing place. Uh, he would take them in there. And she happened to sneak off and call her sister. And she didn't talk for very long. Before she hung up, I don't, it didn't really say if he was coming or what was going on, but she didn't get to talk for very long. She hung up the phone and the sister looked at the caller ID and called the number back and found out where it was at. She called them back and asked them to call the police and that her sister, you know, had been missing and could they please call the police, which I'm not sure why she just didn't call the police herself. Well, the owner of this place, he also worked at a pet store that was down the street. So the employee called the um, owner first and John and was supposed to be coming down there to the pet store for whatever reason. So when he got down there and the guy seen that he had the girl, when they left, he then called the cops. In at which time he was handcuffed and arrested. Yay! Shh. Crowd goes wild. Um, let's see here. Twist to the story. So I love the stories that have twists. Um, I love that all of nobody ended up dying in the story, and that is great. That is great. I mean, except for his wife, but I mean, not by his doing that we know of you all remember how John had lost his job and he was collecting bottles for money you know one would say that he was doing all of this because he was poor right well 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 no uh, mr. John was a millionaire yeah he had inherited money he had a six-figure pay, um, payday, and while he was collecting that six-figure payday when he was working, um, he sold the land around his house to uh, developing, it was like a, a, <clears throat> a developer who was like building uh, like expensive homes. So he had all this money, guys. And his sons said that he was quite the penny pincher. Like, he would literally argue about spending money. And obviously, that goes to show because here he's collecting cans and bottles while he is a millionaire. But the good part of everything is, is his victims got his money. Yay for the victims. Because uh, a lot of times these victims don't get anything because the person who did the crimes you know was is is poor you know like crap they don't really get anything but the heartache that they left behind you know i'm putting this on and it's so hard to talk while i'm doing mascara but this guy was quite the character like like mmm most of the time when they kidnap, they usually keep for a really long time or they end up, you know, killing them. And he was a very interesting character because he felt 
that, you know, he, he didn't keep them for a long time. And, you know, it was just a kidnapping charge, you know, it wasn't any, anything of a big deal. Like in his mind, he was like, it wasn't anything of a big deal. You know, I'm sure his victims um, did not feel the same way, but he very much was like, you know, hmm, they wanted me, they wanted to be here. Like he just had like this very arrogant, I'm a ladies man, everybody wants me. Um, the judge did not agree. <laughs> By far, he ended up getting 18 to life. He is up for um, parole this year, 2021. Although he did, um, oh, I did not want to get that. What am I doing here? He did not get parole in 2020. He did um, go to the parole board and he didn't get it. But he is like uh, 86. Yeah, he's 86 right now. And he is still able to get parole and get out and live and kidnap and and do his vicious ways you know and and we only hope that when he does he's hopefully hopefully watched an ankle bracelet or whatever because as we have seen from this story yeah age is nothing but a number you know we would think somebody of 76 or or around that age would not be i don't know strong enough ample enough want to have desires needs to still live that sort of life but yet here he is out there just kidnapping girls and sticking them in dank dungeons you know and thinking that these girls are his friend and nicknaming them like not the name their parents gave them but here we're going to give you he's going to give you a name that he feels he wants to give you so i got this new morphe lipstick out in a pout this is the blushing nude and it comes with the lip liner look at how it's so cute it comes with the lip liner the lipstick and the gloss i've never used these before but i wanted to check them out so see, it comes with the lip liner, the lipstick. These are so cute. And um, the gloss. Let's try this one out today. Um, I got three different ones. And I have a box of things that I really need to try. But like I said, this whole thing happened with my roof. And I kind of just, whatever. Um, but yeah, this is the Out in a Pout Blushy Nude Lip Trio by Morphe. And I got three of them. I, like I said, I have a box. I got the nude pink and the caramel nude. I really need to just kind of go through things. Um, get my life in check since this whole roof thing kind of knocked the wind out of my cells. Okay, I'm not going to talk while I do my lip liner because then it ends up really wonky donkey. Okay, I really like the lip liner so far. And it tells you what the lip liner color is. Um, pencil is in Love Bite. The lipstick we're going to wear is in Flirt. And the gloss is Boho. Now look at this. I don't, hopefully you guys can see this. Isn't that cute? It's so professional looking. And it's like a matte finish but shiny on the top. I love this. It feels very, like the packaging feels very expensive. This is coming from a non-lipstick person, just so you know. Because your girl does not wear lipstick very often, just because I don't have much lips. And then did I tell you that the lip gloss is in Boho? There we go. Isn't that, oh, I love it. This, and I'm going to keep all three of these together in this box until I decide, because I'm thinking about moving my makeup area out of my room and into by my office. Yeah. 
my girlfriend for my birthday. She got me tatty lashes. Um, she is from Scotland. And um, yeah, she's amazing. She's a really good friend to me. And she thought of me for my birthday, which really meant a lot. There's another lady on here who is making this rainbow thing for um, Lyric's room. And I'm so thankful for all the things you guys send because you guys have been sending. Oh, okay, glue. Get off my finger. You guys have been sending things in support mostly. Like you guys really have been supportive of this whole like, shit experience. These ones that I'm going to pretend put on to see if I want to wear them. They are TL3. They're very bushy. The only thing that I'm worried about is the fact that um, they're very super curly. And my eyelashes are never like like totally bent up and I'm always worried about that with lashes when I find ones like this although they're so soft I'm not gonna lie but I just wanted to kind of place them on for a moment and see usually with this look I wear half lashes oh my god it's sticking to everything stop yeah I'm gonna end up wearing my half lashes for this look these are just too fluffy and it covers up the yellow um this look is so fun and so flirty. I'm going to show you how I kind of finish it off. Because why not? I absolutely love that I'm back, but I also <laughs> absolutely like the content is so hard. Like you either have an avenue that you're doing on your pages. I'm just putting this into the corner of my eye, just so you know. Um, you either have like a direct thing I do see a lot of people who bounce around and do different things um so you either have like a complete mindset of what you're going to do or you're like me and you're like I never expected to have um a YouTube page like I totally just did that I never expected to have a YouTube page so I never had anything in mind I just when everybody was like, you want more of the story? And I was like, oh my God, this is going to take me 100 videos just to get the first part out of what I had went through in my situation. And then there was this really nice lady and she was like, you should make a YouTube. And she didn't really guide me. Shame on you, because it was hard. But she did kind of give me some pointers and stuff and kind of give me the shove because I was like, yeah, of course. Of course I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that right away. I'm going to start this channel right away. And then I never, well, at the time I wasn't, I didn't. And I was just like so scared. And then it told me like I had to have so many followers to do this and so many views to do this. And I was that scared the piss out of me. Like you have to have so many to do a lot of things and it was very just like daunting to me. So now that I have all those things, which I got, okay, I seen you, where did you go? I have all those things that I needed to have and <clears throat> I got all the views. I can't talk and do eyelashes. Some of you girls are just like, y'all are the bomb. Me, I'm over here like, I can't do it. But, um, yeah, now that I have all of that, I'm like, what direction do I want to go? Which way am I going to go? I mean, of course, leave your ideas. What should I do? I do makeup. I cook. I do a lot. Oh, my God, quit sticking. I do a lot of mental health stuff. Of course, I make mental health planners. I own a candy store, although I haven't worked a whole lot in it because, like I said, I'm dealing with this rough situation. But you let me know and you drop a comment. But for now, this is the look of the day. You all have an amazing day. Leave love, leave comments. I love it all. I do read the comments and stuff. Um, you guys have a great day. Bye, guys.